What's up, YouTubers? Ken here from Dyslexic Investor, and we're going to be looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is one of the oldest, most basic uh, stock index that we've had, and a lot of people you see in the news when people say, oh, the Dow hit all-time highs, the Dow above 10, the Dow above 15,000, the Dow above 28,000. That's what we're currently at uh, at all-time highs this week, and I just wanted to run through the overall index. So the index within the Dow Jones is only 30 of the companies on the exchange in the United States. Um, so that being said, we're gonna, not going to be finding a small pharmaceutical speculative play on this index. You'll be able to find the larger companies that you'll see going through here, uh, everything from Apple, uh, all these huge, super large companies. So we're just going to go through uh, all 30 companies, do a quick uh, technical uh, and fundamental analysis of looking at each company. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So currently we are looking at Apple, you can kind of see here, that's up here in the corner, this is the, that's where the symbol is, so it's AAPL. We're going to do this also in alphabetical order, so there's no rhyme or reason behind it. All right, let's get that out of the way. So Apple, holy moly guacamole. This thing has been nothing but an uptrend, you can kind of see here, my lines are terrible, but it has been in a fantastic trend, constantly still going up, um, holding the yellow line, this guy right here, multiple times boom boom kind of broke there <clears throat> due to horrible guidance i believe um actually that was over here the looking at just continue going higher um again this is a lot of it's tied to the china trade uh, i want to kind of look at a weekly chart to kind of give you a better perspective here again this is a weekly chart <sighs> that's the RSI is showing, this is why all indicators uh, should not be traded equally. Uh, not one indicator is a meaning to sell, buy, or hold, or anything. It has to be four or five different indicators kind of giving you the buy, hold, or sell indicator. So this right here, if you would have sold when this RSI on the weekly, the weekly hit uh, in September, at 216, you would have missed 50, 60 bucks of still up running. But everything else was showing high. The shake and money flow, which is a lot of institutions uh, buying it, is fantastic. So, that being said, um, and then you can look at a standard deviation channel here. Again, you can kind of see here when it hits the third deviation, which is the red dotted line, it usually has a kickback if it breaks above it. But it has been completely gangbusters um, from that last quarter and just been riding it up and just kind of coming just slightly in. So this is a fantastic stock. Um, continue. Hard to get in right now. If it comes back a little bit, to again, to the yellow line, the 21 exponential moving average, I would definitely be a buyer. Uh, next, we have American Express. Another is a credit card company. They do a lot of business overseas. Mm -hmm. This could be a fantastic play. Again, this blue teal line is the 200 uh, exponential. Yeah, 200 exponential moving average. Um, it's kind of been choppy. This it's breaking out of this uh, downtrend here. Let me highlight that for you guys. Uh, this right here that is a change in trend uh, in the short term trend. That is. Uh, the 200 kind of caught it, and now it's been trading sideways and showing signs of trying to break out right here. Um, if you're not in it right now, it'd be hard to get in behind this because a lot of stocks are moving right now, and it's very difficult to find something that's going. Another company that has been, it's not fair, sure, a shies a ton of, uh, of troubles and issues is BA or Boeing the Airlines or Boeing... Uh, company, which is they create a lot of the airlines that you, uh, or, uh, yeah, the flights that you fly. Uh, they and if you don't know, the Max Eight has been halted, and that's like 450 plus planes, I think. Um, and a lot of companies are feeling the pain. And on a daily chart, it's just been in range, as as we mentioned before. Like the range is here, the range is here. Like you can clearly see that. That like that is a 
trading range as you've ever seen it. So guess what I'm doing when it hits down here? I would like to buy something. Like that would be really interesting, unless it's like, oh uh, yeah, the seven, the they actually uh, have rat poison in all the seats and everyone dies who flies the airplane. Definitely don't buy it if the news is that. Um, but if it's uh, within reason and it's it's kind of setting up because it looks like it doesn't set up for long, maybe like five or six days. Um, and then it just continues to move higher. So let's go take a look weekly chart. <clears throat> Again, we're gonna lower the RSI, so somewhat shake in money flow, which is basically an institutional buying and but you can see here again, this is the 89 exponential moving average, and it's been holding it very steadily. Again, not, this is not a perfect science where it just kind of breaks through. This is not baking. This is kind of cooking of a teaspoon, a dash of this, dash of that. Um, this is going to be holding this line here. So this would be an, actually a fantastic opportunity uh, to looking to add something to that. So that might be a good stock to look at. Uh, next, we have cat. Uh, this is not the kitty cat. This is Caterpillar, uh, which is a huge uh, operator of construction equipment worldwide. And this thing is highly levered to the Chinese trades uh, deal. Got to see here kind of a downtrend if you've ever seen it. It's been hovering in around the 200, broke above the 200 here, which that's, that's a good sign, right? Um, can, had a huge breakout of the quarter, kind of came back down. I always like to see it hold the 21, which it kind of did, and kind of moving higher. This would be, I would see not buying a full position in any of these right away, because you never just go put all your chips into one side, um, but looking at adding if it hits the 21 again and kind of consolidating and seeing what happens um, with the uh, this trade deal because again on a weekly chart you kind of sees you see a better picture on a longer term time frame so we can kind of see here the trend here kind of it's kind of hovering above trying to break out so that's a good sign uh shake and money flow is pretty good rsi is really good momentum is really good so that's a pretty positive sign so it's going to be hard to find a lot of stocks that are doing terrible um cisco is actually one that's actually not doing too great um so that being said, Cisco is actually on my list to look into because it, it actually triggered on my alert down here on the weekly chart. It's kind of hovering around this previous support line that I put in place and it's holding. So I want this to hold just a tad bit longer. You can kind of see here on a daily chart, it did kind of break through. I did kind of miss it. I was a little skeptical because again, I let my emotions get uh, on the, the, the trade deal stuff. but this is more uh, a correction as well so this has to kind of correct itself before it can go higher so i'm not highly too motivated about this because it's still below the 200 which is it's going to take a lot to kind of break through that and you kind of see this has failed a couple of times um, at the 48 and like almost the 50 level so that would be some uh, 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 resistance going back up a chevron uh, oil gas company <sighs> yeah this is trading range right here this is if you just want to sell when it gets up here and buy when it gets down here this is that, that's your play right here I don't really have too much else to add on Chevron I know they pay a pretty nice awesome dividend but it's just it's just too blah for me uh, and with something better to invest in now Disney <sighs> This is my, one of my favorite guys here. I'm actually gonna move this up to here, uh, replace. So this is, this is my new alert. I, I wanted it down here. I, wanted to add, I want to add more to this, I really do. Um, it recently had a, a fantastic quarter, uh, 20, I think there are 20 million, probably 20 million plus subscribers for the new Disney Plus service. Uh, kind of came off hitting all-time highs people are selling up here uh, the 150 ish coming back down I like it that it's holding the 21 here would like to see this kind of consolidate a little bit more and then hopefully for a nice little kick higher um, let's go ahead and look at a weekly chart here you can see here it's it's Disney was in a 
terrible trading range here just between like 196 and like 110 over like two years just trading because this is what people are anticipating like is are they going to get their stuff together to be able to compete with Netflix and the new streaming services? And guess what? Bada bing, bada bing. That April, they announced it's coming this year, and the stock has not looked back. Um, again, showing good signs of holding the, the 21 here uh, on the weekly. Again, not a rocket scientist. Kind of does break through it, but uh, it holds it. And this is something where I would like to buy it at like the 129 level. That is super low where it is right now, but that is something that I calculated where I want like to see it. Um, all right, now we have uh, Dow Inc. This is kind of a newer company, so it's gonna not have too much long-term trading here. Um, again, it's industrial. I don't really want to touch this. Kind of basically breaking above the 200 and seeing how it goes from there. So nothing else to add there. Goldman Sachs bank that everyone kind of hates and likes at the same time. Um, breaking out above the 200 multiple times, but just trading in this range. So you kind of see here we're breaking out um, this area here um, and hitting not an all-time high, but all-time high for the year. Um, so we can go ahead and see looking at a yearly chart, we're nowhere near where we were uh, two years ago or a year ago actually um, and just being a really bad downtrend and just now kind of breaking out uh, consolidating a little bit here this is the, uh, the low of Christmas so we can just draw a quick trend line here draw this guy bada bang that's the nice trend line up it's going it's going to the right direction but again do you want to get in a company that's just barely above the 200 and kind of been trading sideways for a couple of years. Home Depot is something we actually own for the portfolio. And we did trim uh, up at this, uh, right after the, uh, right before the quarter, actually half the position. Cause we have, we've been just on a crazy run on this. And thank God for that. Um, Cause we're looking to buy some more here once this consolidates. This would be a fantastic buying opportunity right here on just trying to uh, get the potential of adding to the position because it's sold, it's sold off um, due to a lot of the worries of the consumer. Uh, they're not competing with Lowe's very well, which I go to Home Depot quite a bit and I don't have an issue with a lot of the services that I get there. And I think it's just a quality name. It just needs a little bit of retracement. Um, it's sold off more than I would have liked. I would have liked it to hold like the 120, uh, the 220 level, but it's came down a little bit too, a lot, a lot to that extent. Um, but you kind of see here on the 55 on the weekly, um, it's been holding pretty steadily um, for the past year or so. So I'm hoping that this uh, this line of support can kind of feather its landing and potentially go higher from there. Uh, IBM, I have nothing to say about IBM. This thing has been a dud in the lack of better words. It's so blah. It's just, again, below the 200. I really don't like to look at anything below the 200 on the daily. It's below the 200 on the weekly. And you can kind of see here, it's just trading sideways. Yeah, it pays a dividend, bada bing, bada bing. Intel, kind of the same thing, uh, not as bad as IBM, but it's just been hit with so much competition from AMD, um, and AMD's just caught up so much. Like their innovation on Intel has just evaporated, and AMD is now caught up and surpassing them. Um, so that being said, like this is a crazy, tr again, trade-related uh, stuff here. Um, the $60 level is going to be a pretty hefty uh, position to kind of break through. So the 59, 60 level, because this is like basically it's all time high. And you can kind of see on the weekly chart that we've been at this point before. And then it's just kind of sold off. Um, there's not really too much lines of support here. You can kind of see at the 43, 44. If it comes down to that, without a doubt, uh, would be a nice little trade. Uh, Johnson & Johnson, this is actually something we also own for the portfolio, more as a dividend uh, play, 
um, um, looking at this, this has just been, I just have capital on this when it gets to a certain level, which you can see here on a weekly chart, usually at this, like the 89 is when we're buying it. So we think we bought more at 133. We bought some over here, yeah, 133 ish level. And it just been kind of, again, this is literally trading sideways here like that. Um, but it's, the thing is, is it's above the 200, which is this teal line. Um, on the daily, it looks a little bit more of a mess, but this is more of a weekly hold. It's been breaking above the 200 with a lot of potential of going higher. JP Morgan, one of the better performing uh, financials that you can see, um, hitting all-time highs. I believe that's all-time highs, yeah. All-time highs within the last three years. It has been a rocket ship. It's been holding the 21 exponential moving average for some time. On the daily, the 200 has been a wonderful uh, uh, support line for it. Um, just been doing, performing fantastic. It's hard to buy at these levels. It's just been going straight up. Coca-Cola, another great little dividend guy. Um, this thing above the 200, check. Been holding the 21-ish. Been trading sideways for the past three or four months, uh, but overall this is a fantastic hold long term. I do like it setting up here. This is actually pretty interesting on the weekly chart here. You kind of see here, kind of came back, hit the 21, broke a little bit, and then now it's kind of creating higher. So this is great actually. This is a great little play. Uh, they don't have earnings until, what day is that? This is just a guess. They're going to have not earnings until next year. And it doesn't tell me. Okay, so probably sometime in February, it looks like. Um, and again, last earnings wasn't fantastic. This is not going to be moving drastically. There are some drastic moves, but that is with when it's the the overall market that happens with that. Uh, another stock that we own for the portfolio is Mickey D's or McDonald's. <sighs> this is. I wouldn't say a tough hold, but it's kind of a, a dividend play as well. And we honestly got into it because we just thought it was so overblown. As the zip trader always says, everything in the stock market is overblown and over uh, emphasized and looked at. The looking at this horse downtrend is due to the CEO leaving for um, having an affair with. Uh, a subordinate and that's a no-no for them and uh, that being said we kind of let it sell off come back let a dead cat bounce here and then bought it at the 50% retracement and then it's just been kind of trading sideways so basically we're basically up uh, just a tad but again we, or there's a dividend there's a great dividend a dollar 25 we got for per share, I think we own like four or five shares of this, so this is not a bad play um, on that. That being said, on a weekly chart, this has been a fantastic just holding the 21. Again, breaking lower here, but that's due to other circumstances in the market. But it's just been a very high flower. 3M, ooh, that's a tough one. Again, on the daily below the 21, again, highly tied to the China trade deal. So they do do a lot of business, a lot of manufacturing in China. This is very difficult to trade this one or invest. Um, below the 200 on every chart that I can look at, the daily and the weekly, it is kind of setting up down here on the weekly if you want to do long, long term uh, at this level here. So <sighs> the moving averages have kind of leveled out. The 21's kind of getting straight or getting hopefully going straight and then up to the up to the right here but uh it's just going to be a little difficult again it's going to be tied highly to the trade deal i uh, got some momentum kind of get going rsi is kind of a fair trade and then the shake of money flow has kind of been blah as well so if you want a dividend play um and a potential could move off if the overall uh market takes off but it's just a hard to play this below the 200. Uh, then we have Merck, another company 
that's been just kind of in a slightly trend looking thing. So you can kind of see on the weekly. I always like to prefer the weekly first, honestly, because it's just been going holding the 21. It's just been so great holding the 21. Again, you can't buy it way up here. You're going to have to wait for a pullback to like the 21. So it'd be like around like the 85 or $84 level. Let's delete that. All right, Microsoft. This is the one we want to add so badly to the portfolio. It's been holding the 21 almost to the tick. Again, this is not a science. It just kind of trades in around this. You can kind of see here. Um, here on the weekly, it just makes it so perfect looking. If just if just holding this 21 and just slowly riding up, slowly riding up and collecting a dividend, like what more can you get out of this? Like so hard to buy this up here. It needs to come back to like the 140-ish, 143 level for us. Nike, another wonderful uh, looking at this. This has been off to the races. It's kind of highly tied to the trade war as well because they do a lot of manufacturing. A lot of people buy Nike shoes in China. Um, so the tariffs, if they go in place, could cause a lot of issues for them. But on the daily chart, the 200 has been a nice little support for them. That's fantastic. On the, week, on the weekly, the 21, or actually more or less the 55, has been a very nice support level. Uh, for them after earnings or prior to earnings. So uh, looking to buy in, in between the 21 or the 55. So that's like the 90 to $85 level would be a fantastic uh, starter position with a Nike. Pfizer, another pharmaceutical uh, conglomerate. This one's not as performing as good as the other ones. Again, below the 200, having issues breaking above it. You can see here, issue here, issue here, and issue here. Um, I don't follow this honestly to a T, um, but it's kind of creating a base here on the 21. Um, the, the 200 on the weekly has been a nice floor of support multiple times throughout the last years. Kind of see here, here, and here. So that being said, uh, it's a great uh, potential. Um, again, a lot of people do play Pfizer as a dividend play because it is only a $38 stock and they pay like a $0.34 cents dividend, which is not too shabby. All right, now we're going to go to PG, Procter & Gamble. This is your uh, consumer staple kind of play. And this has been gangbusters due to a lot of people being fear of the recession. A lot of people have been buying into this. You'll be able to see this on the check of money flow here when the overall fears of recession was happening, people were just buying into this. And I don't think you can get a more prettier chart than this. Like this is why I love the, the 21 exponential moving average. Like if this thing comes down to the 21, I don't know why I haven't bought this yet, honestly. Like this, I feel quite stupid of not buying this yet. This is a fantastic little play. Plays a nice little hefty dividend at 74 cents. That's, that's a beautiful chart. Travelers companies, those like insurance, below 200, kind of consolidating, kind of bleh, nothing, nothing to write home about. This is not a crazy fun stock on the weekly, kind of been bleh, trading in a range, hitting issues around 150, and then one, this could, you can kind of see here, it's kind of feathering out here. So this is a nice little, trading sideways for another like two or three weeks and once the 21 and all the, these other moving averages kind of level off this would be a nice little ad if you haven't if you don't have already united healthcare group oh i was so worried about these this this these companies i actually bought into this uh way i think it was over here like like 215 or something i think we bought this like 215 or maybe 220 when it was just selling off, I was like, there's no way that this, this is again tied to a lot of the presidential candidates who want to create uh, 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 overall one health healthcare system. And this would basically get rid of a lot of the uh, health insurance companies. That being said, it's it's near its all time highs. That would be not the greatest thing to buy. RSI is kind of going to be hitting the red again this is not just one signal the check of money flow is basically in the middle for where it has been trading um 
but again, very little stock to add to your watch list. Um, United Technologies, this is a really interesting one for us here. This has been trading sideways and now kind of breaking out on the weekly above the 145, just call it, to like the 150, hitting all time highs and just showing potential of just going so much higher. And then Verizon, wonderful little stock here. Um, looking at just trading on the 21 on the weekly here. That being said, continually going higher there. Uh, on the daily, above the 200, everything is moving up to the right. This is a fantastic little stock, and this is something we would like to add on any small pullback. It'll pay a crazy dividend, only 25 cents for a almost $200 shares. But that being said, let's keep moving. Verizon, Verizon, AT&T are usually the ones you hear a lot about dividend. Um, so that being said, Verizon been, has been trading somewhat in range of you can kind of see here on the weekly, just kind of hitting some ebbs and flows here. But the 21 on the weekly, usually when these Verizons or these dividend plays, you want to kind of look on the weekly chart first, then the daily, because the daily can kind of skew and just look like radio waves to you. Um, but on the 20 on the weekly chart, you kind of see here, this has just been going up and to the right. So I like that as well. So we actually have three more stocks left. We have <sighs> Wells Walgreens. This has been kind of beat up because I don't know if it's just Amazon that's just breaking the system down or just the overall uh, infrastructure of how people work and how the economy and how people are trending, changing their trends of, I don't really need to go to the pharmacy anymore. I don't need to go to get X, Y, Z. It's just, I can get it delivered to my house and everything. Like, I don't know if Walgreens hasn't innovated enough, but you kind of see here, I kind of made some lines before here and I traded it way back when in 2018. Um, but that being said, this is something that I don't want to be touching because everything else is going higher and this is going lower. So this is, unless you want to short it. Uh, Walmart, this is just a bit of beautiful chart going up and to the right, holding the 21, holding basically the 89 on the daily. Um, if you want to buy it on extreme trends, uh, downturns, but the 21 on the weekly is fantastic. Last but not least, we have Exxon Mobil. This is something I really don't want to be getting into as well. Below the 200 on the daily, below the 200 on the weekly, and kind of having trouble getting above the 21. Looks like it's below the check of money flow. Our size, blah, momentum is sucky. And that being said, really don't want to be touching this. Again, guys, if you enjoyed the breakdown of the Dow Jones, uh, review uh, technically. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe. Again, this is Ken from the Dyslexic Investor, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.